at first he's like, oh, it's a dishonor or whatever. A wolf would never let anyone drink from him. Yeah. Then right. later on he's like, please drink from me. Yeah, here's my neck, <laughs> here's my arm, here's my thigh, here's my dick. Like, <laughs> take, take everything from me. <laughs> Welcome to the first official episode of Romance and the Monsters. So I'm M. I'm S. I'm Seth. This week we are we read a book that is probably the first book in one of the most popular paranormal romance series yes. out there. I would say, mm-hmm. uh, and it is Presley Cole's A Hunger Like No Other. I almost said No Rest for the Wicked. <laughs> That's book two. <laughs> we read book one. Didn't start with the prequel though. Um, but this book, we're starting the podcast with a bit of a throwback because it came out in 2006, yes, which is like over 10 years ago. So oh, we'll wow. talk about that maybe because perhaps it came into play with how we feel towards certain things or maybe some things are dated a little bit. I don't know. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll see. Um, but let's start with what is this book about? Who wants to go ahead and try to explain this book? Okay, um, I'll go quick. Okay, so um, it's about Emma or Emmeline who goes to Paris because she wants to find out the truth about her parents. Um, so she's Valkyrie and vampire. And that's like something that should never happen ever in the lore, which is what they call their, I guess, their world. It's, I don't even know how to describe it. But anyway, so basically becoming... I mean, not becoming, but being a vampire in Valkyrie, that's literally taboo. Like, mixing your species with vampire is basically taboo in their Mm -hmm. world. And she just wants to find out who her parents are. But as she's there, you know, we get our introduction to Lacklane, who is her mate. Um, And he's been underground in the catacombs, literally being burnt to death numerous times for over, I don't even know, like hundreds of Hundreds of years. I think it's 150 150 years or something like that. He says like 15. Yeah, sorry. No, no. Yeah. So each time he like he would die and then get revived because these immortals like don't die. They only die by like their head getting chopped off or so rootless. I think that's it. (laughs) I don't even know how else to kill them. But yeah, so he sends her and then he's like, I got to get out of here. And then he does by how does he get out of there, guys? (laughs) He bites. His own leg off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is that was crazy. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, this was my first time reading this book and also S's first time reading the book, but it yes. was not Seth's first time. No, she this was my third series. time, guys. But keep in mind, I totally forgot what had happened the first and second time. I remember the first time not liking it at all. And then the third time, I liked it a bit more. And then I totally forgot what happened. Like, I, I, like, it just left my memory. I don't even remember, like, what happened. I just knew the characters' names, and that was it. And then I read it back the f- third time, and here we are today. <laughs> so you so liked you it, more it more this time around. I loved it this time around. <laughs> S and I in sync. Yeah. <laughs> Asking the same questions. <laughs> um, okay, so, as how'd you like it? I loved it. It it, I did. I really did love it. I'm so it took happy. me a little. It took me a little while to get into it in the beginning, but yeah, I loved it, and I think it helped a lot. I think I loved it more because of, I was listening to the audio. The audiobook's good. Instead of, yeah. So yeah, I I loved it. I I liked it. <laughs> I wouldn't say I loved it. Okay, that's a big word. I don't yeah. use love very often. Yeah. Um. But I I definitely liked it. I think it's 
the kind of series that you start and you can already um, imagine how the author gets better and better with each book. Like, yeah. Especially because it's a big series. So I always try to go into those series with an open mind and understanding that they will always get better. The books always get better. Yeah. Um, but I, I did think that the writing was really good. I don't think this was her first book, right? No. I think she wrote no. like her historical books yeah. before. Okay. So the writing is good. The storytelling is good. Not like amazing but that's exactly the kind of thing that I was like yeah I could definitely see this becoming better and better there's potential you can feel the potential especially in the world like I thought the world in itself was really interesting like mm -hmm. I'm not attached to any of the characters yet and this is what happens I feel like when you read a big series it's as you progress in the series you know some of the characters and you get excited about getting to their books mm -hmm. so you can kind of go into those books already with you know, being attached to the characters, whereas when you, it's the first or second book, you're kind of not attached to, like, yet. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just, I think, I don't know where I was going with this, but <laughs> there's potential. I can see that the characters have potential, but especially the world. Like, I was very interested in the world and all the different creatures and I'm just wondering how it works and, you know, how you were saying, like, oh, it's taboo in this world to be with a vampire, but it's, a, it's, a, it's essentially taboo to be with anything that's not your own species, right? And I think it's great that essentially the whole series is about intermingling two species coming together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it's uh, the whole species is uh, the whole species. What? No, nope. the whole series is that. So yeah. Yeah. I love that. But like, right. like you said, Marge, about like the different species, I felt like um, Cressley Cole really did her research or like really wanted to include different types of creatures in the series and she did such a good job because it like they weren't just your regular vampire or werewolf they all had like different characteristics that made them like differentiated them than from what the vampires we know or the werewolves we know like there's just, they're so different that I was just amazed at how she wrote these characters and how she wrote these species. Well, actually, I, I kind of thought that the vampires were a little bit closer to your classical, like, to the to what a classic vampire is mm -hmm. like. But I actually liked that because I feel like, especially since the Twilight days, people have tried to make vampires more and more and more different. True. Mm -hmm. And this was very, like, oh, they're Russian, like, they they have, like, this Russian accent. I just, mm -hmm. I, they, like, they can't go in the no, sun, yeah. they will burn. It's, like, it was kind of more what you would expect vampires to be, and I, I almost liked that better because it was different in a way because everyone's been mm. trying to be so different that going back to the roots is actually kind of fun. I guess you can say yeah. on paper that they're very, like traditional mm -hmm. stereotypical vampire but like I felt like with their whole like they don't get blooded until or like you know they don't become like I don't even know how to describe it but like they don't have blood within their system like in their veins and their heart doesn't beat until they find their bride like their mate so I thought that was interesting and also with the whole biting and t getting their memories like biting humans or like other species and taking in their memories I thought mm. that was so interesting I feel like that was yeah and I feel like that was unique too with the whole memory yeah, I really like that. Yeah, and I liked that it wasn't everyone, or at least that's what how I like that's how I understood mm -hmm. how it worked. It's not everyone that gets that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think they they said that it was um, dangerous to continue, right? If Emma continued drinking from Black Lane, you can get like crazy essentially. Yeah, yeah, because look at the villain. He was absolutely insane. I don't even know how you say it, De Demon Demis Deministrum or something. He was insane, but he was so interesting. He was so interesting. He was, yeah, he was very interesting. I wish, I wish he hadn't died. Honestly, yeah. I kind of sorry spoilers, but <laughs> I kind of wish. I don't know. There was something about him, especially the story with her mom. Like I low key kind of want that story. Me too. It sounded so so good. So they don't they don't get like a novella or anything. No. Like, their backstory? Not yet. No. I mean, yeah, not yet. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> in in Romance Landia, you can always say, maybe this character will get a book. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, let's start with um their first meeting. How did you guys think that went down? Like, how did you, did you like exciting. it? Was it like, oh my gosh, I'm ready for this? Like, how did you like their first meeting? I'm talking about Emma and Lachlan. Yeah, um, I thought it was really interesting because he is not himself. No. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. He's a little bit crazed when he meets her. Yeah. He's like, you have 
alpha male and you have Lock Lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets better, I feel yeah. like, as the book progresses and he kind of returns back to his own mind. But, oh my god, in that first meeting, he is... He's crazy. Yeah. I mean, imagine being locked up for over 150 years. Like, you would be insane. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he <laughs> took it to a whole new level. Yeah, because, I mean, I thought I thought the, the leg thing was really cool. Though I kind of knew about that. It wasn't, like, a surprise. I yeah. knew it was coming. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But it was, it was an intense first meeting. Like, as far as first meetings go, it probably was one of the most intense I've ever read. Yeah. And it's important. Like an intense first meeting is very important. I agree. I feel like sometimes you read a first meeting and you're like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I feel like paranormal especially does it well, like does first meetings well because it's always like, ooh, are they gonna know their mates or like how are, how are they gonna react to being mates? Like, yeah. I liked it too. And I felt like since this is he's a wolf, you got to experience the wolf like in him Mm -hmm. with his actions and then the way that he just went up to her and grabbed her and took her and (laughs) yeah I would say the one thing I was like "Hmm," was how she wasn't pushing back really she was just going along with it and I'm like part of me is like I get it you have a crazed maniac like on top of you right now that's like bring me back to your hotel or we're gonna have sex right here right now yeah I I get it but also like girl do something (laughs) okay but I also think it comes down to like her upbringing like she's literally been sheltered her whole life Mm -hmm. by the Valkyrie her aunts and she hasn't really left and been alone by herself until that trip to Paris and she yeah. just sees, like, this light gay just, like, barreling towards her. And, like, she's trying to run. And she's scared for her life. It's not like she's like, ooh, this man's hot. Like, let me get with it. Or let me, like, punch him back. Because in her mind, she's, like, fight or flight. She, like, but she, she flies. Was, she was this man is hot a little bit. Yeah. yeah. When she saw him coming, she was like, oh, okay. And then she looks she looks behind her, so- her shoulder, like, who is he going after? <laughs> <laughs> Can't be me. No, that's true. But yeah, I just think it was like due to her upbringing, and like as you see the story progresses, she becomes a different character. She becomes yeah. stronger. She fights for what she believes, and she fights for her own rights as the story progresses. And I don't know, I really liked her character this time around, like a lot. Yeah, I feel like she developed really well throughout the story from the beginning to end. I yeah, but I would <laughs> say that the that the characters are in part what kept me from really liking this. Book. Okay. Because he was extremely, extremely overbearing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Overprotective, overbearing, overpossessive, <laughs> over everything. Okay. Like I said, there's Alpha Male and then there's Luck Lane. Like he's not even on the same plane of existence as the <laughs> Alpha Males. Yeah. Um, which is good. However, for me, that only works when the girl gives as much as as she gets. And I did see a progression. Like she started fighting back a little bit, but I do feel like it was such a big part of the plot. Like the push and pull of like, no, you're staying here. Here, no, I'm going home. No, you're staying here. Here's your home. But why am I here? I don't know. I don't want to tell you. Oh, you're not. Yeah. I'm not your mate. No, you're not my mate. No, it turns out you are my mate. What? You lied to me again? <laughs> like. That was a big part of the plot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. It, to me, it's always more exciting, like, the excitement of having such an alpha, alpha male. The excitement comes with, the, like, having a girl character that's just as, like, intense in return. Like, doesn't take the shit. Yeah. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to let you walk all over me. Because she kind of did let him walk all over her but she does like later on talk about how she's not gonna let anyone make decisions for her after like she said she learned mm-hmm. from her like situation and she's like yeah no no one's gonna make decisions for me I'm gonna be the one that's in charge of myself like this is my life and I make the decisions which I really like that she did that and I I like that it started with her being like timid and shy and not knowing the the lore the world and then the book ends with her being confident and sure of herself and I really like that no no yeah and I feel like because people constantly 
like underestimate her and I thought that was really frustrating in like a good way like I sympathized with her I was like why is everyone underestimating you like everyone's babying you and I could I could feel how she wanted to break out of that yeah but Mm -hmm. the Valkyries are like treating her like she can't make her own decisions yeah he's kind of doing the same on his side yeah. because of lack of comp- um, uh, not conversation lack of communication yeah so i just i really felt for her and the valkyries man they're ruthless they're annoying they are <laughs> yeah they are they're they were a little um I don't know how to say it. I don't want to say funny, but silly. I guess they had the like little silly moments, but they were ruthless. Oh my god. The the yeah, the one that the ones that's like misty eyed all the time. What's her name? Oh, oh, Nyx. Like the one that like always is out of like she's like out yeah. of it. Nyx was yeah. something else. Yeah. She okay guys, she's my favorite. I love her. And you'll see as she progresses, like as a story, like story. As the series progresses, she's just like such a interesting like character that oh i just love her you'll love her but does nyx get a book not yet not yet she seemed older is she older she yeah and you you find out more about her in lothair's book guys oh who is lothair's uh heroine you'll see she's you you haven't met her yet lothair was kind of hanging around this like you know in the background and i was like who are you (laughs) What are you doing there? <laughs> I just love it because he's so silent, but like you can tell he's plotting. Like you can tell he's in the background, he's watching things, and he's like, "Yeah, okay, got this." But one thing that I didn't understand: why was he? Why did he keep popping up? Like, will it make sense? I was like, "What is he working with the vampires? Is he yeah. not?" I you'll was a little bit confused about that. You'll see. You'll see. It so was probably on purpose, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll I, I can't spoil it. I can't spoil because like as it uncovers, you're like, shit, this man's ruthless. It's okay. good. It's good. Trust me. Do we want to talk about the one thing I thought was really interesting was the weird sort of fast relationship <clears throat> between um the heroine and her father? I mean it's sort of it's quick, but it was interesting. I was I was really that scene between them, yeah, where they sort of, like he sort of explains what happened to him, and she's mm-hmm. kind of feeling compassion towards him, yeah. And I mean, I feel like I should do do a better job of introducing the scene, but <laughs> <laughs> so basically, what happens is she's with she's at Lachlan's manor palace, whatever he like. I don't even know what he lives in. Was it a castle? I think it was a castle. A castle, and I then. Think it was, yeah vampires attack and then she has like a moment of epiphany where Nyx is like do it fast like grab the vampire's hand fast so that you can trace away meaning like go wherever he wants you to go so like Nyx already knows what's happening she knows what's at play and then Emma makes that decision to go with the vampire and then that's where she meets her father which is all the way back in I don't even know where Helveta is I think it's in Russia right yeah anyway so then she meets her father there and then, what happens, guys? <laughs> I mean, they they reference in the book, which I thought was funny. They reference the interrogation scene in oh my god, I need to remember um, Hannibal Lecter. Oh yes, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They reference that scene, and I was like, you know what? That's exactly what it feels like. Yeah, he's he's sort of a psycho, but sort of not. He's on to something. He's, like, compassionate and crazy at the same time. Like, you can feel he has feelings for her, for his daughter. Sort of weird. I don't know. Yeah. Like, fatherly affection. But, yeah. like, at the same time, he wants to kill her. But then afterwards, he's like, no, kill me. Like, yeah. it, it was very strange. Yeah. But in a great way. For me, it was heartbreaking. Because, like, you can tell, like, as you said... He would care for her if he didn't go, like, if he wasn't mad and, like, power hungry. Mm -hmm. I think he would have loved her and cared for her if he didn't lose his mind. And, like, I think it's just so heartbreaking because you can see how much Emma wanted that father figure, wanted that dad. She spent, I don't know how long, looking for her parents. Mm -hmm. And then to find out that her dad is, like, the big bad villain that tortured her mate and, like, made him go crazy. And it's, like, it's just a heartbreaking situation. 
How did you how did you find that reveal that like he's he's her father? I was Did you like were you surprised or How about you ask? Cuz I feel like I've read it three times so like I kind of Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I felt like I expected it. When they first mentioned that he might be her father, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I kind of expect it. Okay. So I wasn't surprised. I don't know. I I I don't think I expected it because I don't know. I thought she's probably related to one of them, but I didn't mm-hmm. think it would be him. Yeah. Specifically. So that was interesting, uh, perhaps a little bit convenient, but, you know, romance novels will be convenient at times. <laughs> Let's move the plot forward. Yeah. So wait, so I have a question. Is she related to Loth? Is it Lothier? Lothier? Lothier. Is there some type of relation there? Um, I would think so. I don't really remember. But I think they are. How is Lothair related to her father? I don't know if he's related to her father. After, I don't know, I don't really remember, but I know he's, like, the bastard son of, like, someone there. Because I know who he's related to in my head. And You can't tell us. I don't think he's related to um, her dad, though. So maybe not. I actually don't remember. No. But I know who he's related to, and I'm trying to remember how he's related to her dad. There's know. some, there's someone, there's a, um, is it evil? The evil's trying to overthrow Demestru, right? E- um, Eva or Ivo, whatever his name is. Uh, he Ivo. was just trying to, he's the general that tried, he's betraying his king to become the next Horde king. Mm-hmm. But there's also Kristoff, who's like the forebearer. Kristoff. And he's try- he is like doing the whole rebellion thing and trying to overthrow mm-hmm. the Mestru and become the king for there. There are so but many characters in this yeah. book. <laughs> there are. Yeah. We're on book one and it's already confusing. So, <laughs> how did you guys feel about um, this book being written in two thousand and six, and how does it translate to reading it in twenty twenty? Honestly, I didn't know it was written in twenty six two thousand six. Really? So March you didn't? No, no, I didn't oh. think it was that old. That's until old. You mentioned it. <laughs> it's yeah. a throwback. It makes sense why he was so alpha male, I guess. Like, yeah. That's a different type from that time, I feel like. Here's the thing. I've been going back and reading really old school romances from the 90s. So, like, way older than this, right? Mm-hmm. And I expected those alpha males to be like Lachlan. I know. But no, I was really surprised by this because this is way older and he's way more intense than the alpha males from the 90s. Mm. So that to me was a surprise. And I think his overall behavior is definitely the, the biggest red flag I guess of like the age of the book because I I as I was reading it was definitely like I don't think they write alpha males like this anymore Cressley Cole does like all of her books her alpha males like I don't even I can't even tell you that they change they stay alpha like they don't change they still are this overbearing and this overprotective and her series is very popular so I feel like that says something about maybe how men are portrayed much differently nowadays and as opposed to like someone who keeps on you know writing the same kind of male characters and it's bringing in a lot of readers yeah what really like made me clue in that it was in 2006 was the crazy Mm -hmm. frog ringtone guys (laughs) oh my god (laughs) yeah i was like oh my gosh crazy frog was the ish back in my day i'm not even like i don't know how old would i have been 11. <laughs> yeah. They had a GPS, though. No, they had the MapQuest. Into- oh. She mentioned MapQuest, and I was like, I remember trying to get places, Did- me and my family, printing out directions and using MapQuest to get to places, like, on pieces of paper. Like, we had to follow yeah. the directions. Yeah, so I could feel the age in this book, but, I like, I didn't mind. Like, I didn't think it deterred anything from the story. I still really enjoyed it, and I loved it. The iPod as well. Yeah. That was another tale, now that I think about it. One thing that I find is a major, again, like, another red flag of, like, a, a book's age yeah. is fashion. Oh, yeah. And I actually, for once in my life, I actually thought that the fashion did not age the book. Really? Yeah. 
I was really surprised because I was full on expecting. Well, I, okay, okay. There was one scene where she, apparently she's wearing like a low rise jeans, yes. and I was like, "Girl, I feel for you. <laughs> I would never wear those ever again." <laughs> but that was it, and like, yeah. low rise is kind of back in style apparently. So it was it was quite surprising because books from the early two thousands often have the worst fashion you can think of so Mm -hmm. but then again she didn't really like spend a whole lot of time describing uh clothes if anything she described his clothes because he kept buying it off of her black whatever (laughs) what is it what was it called her like american express like prestige card or whatever and i'm like this man thinks she's like rich i just like i i thought the humor was really good in the series like the humor cressy cole can write good humor and, like, I don't know, I had some, like, small lines that stuck out, and I just couldn't stop laughing. Like, it was when um, they were in the car, and then um, he was asking about her getting, like, how does she feed? And then he's like, Christ, you couldn't do this. How do you drink? And then she mumbled, liquid goes into my mouth, whereby I swallow it. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, this girl's so witty. Yeah. Yeah, and he does he does say that at some point. He's like, you know what, my mate is pretty funny. <laughs> and like I like that she even finds a way to introduce humor in serious situations. Like, I don't know if you remember when um Lock Lane went to the Valkyrie house, their mansion. What was it called again? Don't I don't know. Anyways, so he goes there and he knows that Garrett's there and he knows that Emma's there. And then um he says, <laughs> Then trade me for my brother. Gareth bellowed in Gaelic from somewhere inside. God damn it, Lachlan, I just got into this house. And I just thought that was so funny because, like, you don't know Gareth's there, but then all of a sudden you hear him, like, yelling. And, like, you don't see him, but you know he's yelling from the house. And I was just, like, dying of laughter. I think I laughed for, like, a good three minutes just sitting there. I loved that in the beginning of the book, to get to her, he bites off his own leg. And at the end of the book, he claws his way, like, to the... (laughs) upstairs like out of the room to get to her and then there's gareth that's just left holding the ceiling (laughs) and then when he comes back like nikolai is also there and they're both like struggling (laughs) and he just mentions that they had to stay that way for like hours till someone came around to like repair (laughs) right and then like it was just so funny it was just such a funny like i don't know man the way she does her humor is just so good but what about the way that she does sex scenes? Oh my gosh, her sex scenes are so good, aren't they? Trigger warning. <laughs> they're a little bit uh, dubious consent sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It has to be said, if it's something yeah. that you don't like, don't read this book. It's a little bit of like, I touch you and I ask afterwards if it's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But I will say he never took her against her will. Like, he, whenever, like, you know, things got heated, she'd be like, no. And then he would respect her wishes. Which, I mean, like, I know, as you said, it's like he started things without getting her consent. But then he did stop it when he didn't get it at all. Mm-hmm. One scene that I was kind of iffy about was when he was drinking. And then she drank from him. Yeah. And she was a drunk. Yeah, oh, the, yeah. Yeah. He was about to like go a little. T- I felt like he was about to go a little too far. He was exactly. until his conscience hit him. Yeah, and like anger, anger, and sex is are sex are very tied for him. Mm. They're they're very intertwined. Yeah. So again, if that's something that you can't read about for whatever reason, it's fine. Don't read this book. But he's very like there. This especially yeah. like the new moon thing, or not the new moon, but the full moon thing. Mm-hmm. It's like he's he's. For Yorius, but also very excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought, I, I expected a little bit more from that scene. I'm not gonna lie. You did. Well, I mean, the, the, the act in itself was fine. But just, like, because of how he talks about it. And I kind of wondered if it wasn't as intense as he made it sound like beforehand. Because she had drunk so much blood from him. And he was a little bit, like, oh. weaker. Yeah, maybe. I didn't even put I those together. I wondered about that. But we totally bypassed the whole reason why you guys were interested in the book. So oh. I expected that scene before to be the a full, lot more. Uh, yeah, I expected it to be more intense like the scene in the woods. I didn't think it was going to be a I'll get back at you type scene. Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah, no, I yeah, I didn't I, for, I didn't remember how it happened. But yeah, I'm with you guys on that. 
we should probably uh, say what's what we're talking about. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes. It's the scene where she gives him a blowjob and drinks his blood from his penis. So, yeah. there you go. But I thought what was, like, like interesting and it made me like that scene a bit, he was so into it. He was, he's so kinky, let's be real. He was, like, yeah. ready to get his dick bit off by a vampire. And I loved oh, it. for sure. Yeah. At first, he's like, oh, it's a dishonor or whatever. It's a, it's, uh, like, a wolf would never let anyone drink from him. Yeah. Then right. Later on, he's like, please drink from me. Yeah, here's my neck. <laughs> here's my arm. Here's my thigh. Here's my dick. Like, <laughs> take, <laughs> take everything from me. <laughs> yeah, no, I loved it. But, okay, we kind of, we talked about it and then we didn't. The first sex scene. I liked it. I thought it was really good. Uh, I felt like it was a little intense. It was very really? intense. Really? I thought it yeah. was not as intense as really? I felt like. Yeah, I felt like it was a little intense. Maybe because of how alpha he is. Yeah. And how it was just like, she's mine and then I'm going to take her here and there. You'll like, like a lot of the sex scenes then, S, because a lot of them are that. Like, I feel like Krusty Cole does a good job of building up their sexual tension. Mm-hmm. And, like, there's so many situations where things are sexual, but, like, nothing goes further. And then, like, mm-hmm. finally at the sex scene, it's like so intense and you're like finally it's happening yeah. that's yeah. like how i felt i expected this. the sex to happen way sooner i don't know why is is that a bad thing no 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 i i prefer when it happens later on because usually for me anyway it means that the scene in itself means more to the characters yeah mm-hmm. i like when I, I like sex scenes that actually tell you about the characters and show you how their relationship towards each other has evolved Mm -hmm. like that's important to me and I think that scene kind of did that and when it happens too early in a book sometimes I mean sometimes it can work like you if a sex scene is really awkward I've read especially recently I've read books where the first sex scene is really awkward and it's because the characters don't know each other and it's just amazing um but yeah in this case she was kind of uh a little bit mindless does that make sense like because of the moon um yeah because she ended up having some of the instinct in her like yeah so yeah what's that about <laughs> so um i don't i don't really remember how it happens but i think it's because she ended up being the king's mate and like maybe mm. oh with swallowing his with blood, blood and like she takes yeah. part of him oh. inside her and that happened to be like you know the instinct is inside her now it's a part of her because she's only feeding from a like so she yeah. that's why nix yeah, calls her like Emma of the three, I think that's what she called her. Oh, yeah, because she's werewolf, uh, Valkyrie, and, and vampire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Anyways, so, I don't know. It kind of went from, I don't want to have sex with you, to I am so mindless with the moon's urges that, like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. It did, like, go from zero to a hundred pretty quick. It did. But, um, I don't think it, it happened that quick. Maybe because there was that push and pull throughout the book, and then once there was a lot that hit. came before. Like they have a lot of like sexual encounters, if you will, yeah. beforehand. Yeah, I love when vampire feedings get heated. They always do in every vampire book that has ever been written. Feeding from someone always turns to sex. Okay, but I love it. I love. I love. Yeah, no, yeah I'm just I saying. I love like, it. <laughs> Because of course. (laughs) Because like he was at first, as you said, so against it, so disgusted by that aspect of her. But then he ended up at the end loving it and like looking forward to it more than she did. I I wonder if, I wonder if this whole concept of vampires feeding turning to something sexual relates back to like the 1500s and probably earlier than that even. Um, when they had like this belief that when you had sex, blood was shared between partners. Is really? Yeah, they had this belief that um, when you had sex with someone, you mixed blood. Wait, is this is this real? No, it is real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it what? Is real. It's a real belief that people had for a very long time. People thought that blood would exchange between partners during sex. I never knew that. Yeah, I read the um, I read a, like a couple months ago a poem that was all about like two lovers that like their blood mixed within a tick like the tick bit like both of them and their blood mixed because of that in the tick and like the man was trying to convince the lady to have sex with him because he was like we're essentially already married our blood are mixed within the tick (laughs) oh god (laughs) it was all it was very strange but very good i wonder if it's 
if it comes from that, like from that old belief that sex and blood should be related somehow. I'm, that's that's a good thought. I never I never even thought of that. Anyways, let's go to um, you know, the main question of our podcast: Who is the monster no, in the story? No, nope, not yet. Okay, go. Well, I just wanted to talk about the audiobook. Oh yes, okay, yeah, we'll before, do that first beforehand yeah. because S and I both read uh, both listen to the audio did you do the whole book in audio i yeah the whole book in audio and then sometimes i would read along yeah i started the book reading it and then i switched over to audio about like six chapters in or so oh and i i just wanted to talk about the audio because it was very hyped (laughs) a lot of people (laughs) love this audio book yeah like a lot of people and i don't know that i loved it because what here's the thing what I don't like about audiobooks and the reason why I mostly only do audiobooks when I'm re- when I'm reading historical romance that I know has a lot of banter mm-hmm. is because I find and you guys tell me if you feel the same way I find that audiobooks make things funnier and sometimes scenes that shouldn't be funny are made funny and I'm bringing it this up because in part that sort of affected how I saw that first sex scene. Okay. Because he he made it funny. (laughs) And I was like, really? I know that on paper this is hot. And, like, if I was reading it with my own two eyes, I'd be like, oh, this is so intense. This is good. But because of the noises he makes, (laughs) I just can't take it seriously. He got so into it. Was it the, is that the scene you shared with us? Us? No, that was the actual, like, uh, forest wood scene. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about, like, the very first. No, no, first, no, first. the the, the, the so. full moon scene. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that was from that. It was, it was funny. It was funnier. It was, it wasn't supposed to be funny, and yet it was. <laughs> I didn't find it funny. I found it no? really, like, I had to turn down the volume because I didn't want anybody to walk into my room and, like, hear. I, I felt like. Okay, so there's when there's audiobooks, it de- I think it depends on the actor. Mm-hmm, definitely. Like, let's say there's moments where the person laughs and sometimes the actor just says it, reads along and doesn't laugh. And then <laughs> there are actors that actually, they they mention laughing and then they <laughs> laugh. So I, I love that. I love it. Bec- so in that scene, I felt like he, the actor got into the character and the scene like really well. To the point where his voice changed. It got, like, really rough. He did a really good Indeed. job, yeah. I like yeah. I like when he changes his voice and, like, intonation. And I think mm-hmm. yeah. Robert Petkoff, that's his name, he changes mm-hmm. it so well. And, like, he interchanges, like, the genders also really well. Because not only does he change yeah. the, the tone of his voice, but he also changes his accents. I mean, there's never anything not funny about the male narrator making the female voice or a female narrator making the male's voice there's nothing that can't be funny about like it's always funny it's always funny yeah his his scottish accent was on point i really liked it um and you're right like his intonations were good i don't know one of my favorite narrators is rosalind lendor she does the julia quinn audiobook so Mm -hmm. that's historical romance and julia quinn has a lot of banter in her books and Rosalind is amazing at being really funny in the funny moments. But then when you get to those sex scenes, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know how she does it, but suddenly she switches how she's saying things or whatever. And you're like, oh, okay, this is, we're, this is intense now. We're in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't get that from this book. No. I, it was kind of constantly just funny to me anyway. Like even the action scenes. Would you listen to the podcast? I'm not podcast, sorry. <laughs> you are in it. Would you listen to the <laughs> audiobooks of the other books? Yeah, no, that's that's what I'm saying. Like I didn't dislike it because A, it reads really easily and he's good enough that I'm like, I think I'll continue the series via audio. But like you said, the sex scene wasn't as intense for you. Yeah, there's there's that. That's like one of the downsides. The other one is that you miss out on some information sometimes. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. especially things about the world building that is mentioned and your brain just forgets it right away yeah, yeah. so I do I feel like that. that's another downside of doing the audiobooks yeah. but anyway I'm, I just wanted to mention it because it's so hyped up for this series it's not just you Seth that was like do the audiobook it's so good like everyone's always like do the audiobooks of this series so you do go in with like high expectations and yeah I feel like that's also part of it as well I wouldn't say it's the best yeah. one I've heard but just be ready to maybe you'll have an experience like us and she didn't have any problem with it sounding overly funny I did again I listened to it very fast too so maybe that makes it funnier even because it was so fast when you shared your speed I yeah. I couldn't keep up and it's not as fast as I usually do it yeah. it just reads so much quicker that way it's crazy it, it can take me like five days to read 300 pages but three hours to listen to 300 pages, like, because of your speed. I know. Like, <laughs> It what? took me, like, almost a week to read. You know, I had it at the 1.2 speed. It was so slow when I listened <laughs> to your excerpts. I was like, what the hell? That's normal. That's normal speed. Like, that's they're talking normal. I listen to, like, the regular, I don't even know, the, the like, I don't change it. I just listen to it with the what? way. Did yeah. You, to the one. I think you I'm just listen like, to the 1.0. Yeah, 1.0. Yeah. I just like, I don't know. I like that speed. You know, it just, everything is where it needs to be. There's a pause when there needs to be a pause. But they talk like that. No. The 1.0, I feel like that for me, it, it can be slow. It takes me. But the 1.2 for me, it's... I'm usually either at 1.75 times speed or two times speed if I can make it my this gosh. one I listened to at 1.60 because of the accents I couldn't like if if it was faster than that the Scottish accent was just like I couldn't understand the shit what he was saying so <laughs> but no way no wonder you finished it way before me yeah <laughs> <laughs> just but it's I, I'm such a slow reader, guys, that this is so much fun for me because I'm like, oh, this is what it feels like to be able to read a book in three hours. <laughs> like, finally, I get how this feels because usually I'm the one like taking two weeks to read the goddamn book. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. do we want to talk about who the monster is? Yes. Let's is? get down to the point of this podcast. Who is the monster in this story or what is the monster? I mean, they all are, right? Yeah. yeah. Everyone's a monster. I feel like they... <laughs> they all are. But if we're, like, looking at it, I guess, with a different lens, I guess you can say his prejudice was the monster because it kept sabotaging their relationship. And, like, he kept lying to her because of his prejudice against vampires and his hatred towards vampires. His prejudice for him and for her, I would say... Because I said earlier on that everyone underestimates her, but I think she underestimates herself, too. Yeah. And I think I think that was a major thing for her, like realizing, hey, I, I can actually kick ass. I can actually, you know, be my own person, make my own decisions, yeah. do what I want. I don't need no man, although maybe I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think for her, that was it. Like that was overcoming that. But you're right. We're just going to go back to law thing for now. You're right. <laughs> His prejudice is definitely... Yeah. The one main thing that he needed to get over yeah. in order to fully be with her because I think she was very much aware of, like, it's a big source of conflict between them, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because she can't help who yeah. she is. She is a vampire at the end of the day. She isn't the vampire that tortured him, but her father was. But at the same time, yeah, he just hated who she was as a, like a, as a species. And that was something that needed to be overcome because... You can't be with someone if they hate you and hate who you are. Goddamn, the, the miscommunication in this book was also a monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Just talk to each other. Because, because she, she knows that and her own expectations of how he's going to react to her was also a problem. Mm -hmm. Because she made up her mind of how he would like this or dislike that about her. Yeah. Bef like without like before knowing what the truth was if that makes sense like I don't know a lot of they have a lot of issues do you feel like they overcame the issues yeah I think so I feel like they did yeah I think they did because I think at the end he realized that not all vampires are the same 
you know, and, you know, she is a sweet, loving person. And yeah, and he realizes, I think as he met, like, as he met, whoa, as he met (laughs) Nikolai, that there are different types of vampires, and vampires can be good as well, because he's only ever seen one side of them. Yeah, Yeah. I think at first, I struggled with the fact that, um, he's instantly more okay with her when he learns that she's half Valkyrie. And I was like, I would rather you like her not knowing that she's half something else and not just fully vampire. But I do feel like by the end of the book, without making it explicit necessarily, you do kind kind of get the feeling that he's he would have turned out okay, even if, like with her, even if, yeah, turns out she was just vampire. Like, yeah. He, he, by the end, he kind of accepted, he, he accepted the, what's his name? Nikolai? Like, he, he didn't, like, beat the shit out of him yeah. on site or whatever. Like, he was kind of over the vampire thing. Which, mm-hmm. I guess, this is also, like, a big part of what is a monster. It's his own past, his own scars. Exactly. His own, like, like, physical but emotional scars as well. Like, it's, you know, you said prejudice, which I guess c- comes directly from that, but... You know what I mean? Like, that was... And it's interesting that it was shared with her. Mm-hmm. Like, she she saw firsthand his past, which I thought was really interesting. Mm-hmm. We talked about it. Like, yeah. how she gets his, his memories. But I think it's an interesting way of... Because usually you'll get, you know, a, um, a scene in a book where the guy finally opens up about his past or whatever, which wasn't really the case in this book because she sees She already past knew about it. He, he learns that she can see his past and he's like, oh, okay. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. I feel like I feel like it was more like he would not know where to start with sharing his past because I felt like it was, for him, he was basically like out of his mind throughout most of it because of how painful it was. And I don't think he can imagine sharing that pain and that torture and his past with Emma because it was like hard to deal with himself I don't even think he's dealt with it yet yeah but because he literally says that he says like I don't I don't want to tell you about this Mm -hmm. I don't want you to carry this hurt and then she does but in in the beginning it kind of makes it seem like because they're mates it's automatic or is it because if he would have been mates with another wolf that they can share memories not not memories, but like it's automatic. Once they're they once they're mates, um, she she feels y- they can feel each other's pain and each other's yeah. I think they do have that though. I don't know. Do they? I feel like they do because I feel like there's a couple of scenes where, especially when she wakes up wakes wakes up from that one nightmare about his past. Like she wakes up and there's thunder outside and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I re- I feel like I remember him feeling her pain. I don't know. I, I think could be wrong about I that. I think it was just like the lightning like and the thunder was shaking the whole castle. That woke him up, but also like her screams woke him up as well. I don't know if he felt her pain. I don't I, I don't know, I got think... the impression that they they did, but maybe. I don't know. Maybe I didn't read that right, but, but per- perhaps it's maybe just the a wolf wolf thing. Maybe where it's like automatic, or you yeah, feel just their pain, just right? two wolves, so. like yeah, two two mates when they're wolves. Maybe they because I do remember her like explaining that too, like how they will feel each other's feelings and stuff. Which I think it's kind of cool that there's different types of mates, if you will. Like yeah, the vampires have their bride, mm-hmm. the werewolf or what like have their mates, and then what's the other one? The demon? The, um, ghouls? No. The, the f- <laughs> There's another one. It was like a kindred spirit or whatever. All I know, demons also have their mates. I don't know. I forgot what they're called, though. I have a question. Yes. His manservant or whatever you want to call him. Yeah. What is he? I don't know. I don't think that... Did, did they ever say? Well, they say at some point that he can shapeshift. So is that what he is? A shapeshifter? Maybe. Oh, that's right. And he was like, oh, she didn't ask me to shapeshift. That's a first. No, she didn't ask me to impressions. But then later on, they outright mentioned shapeshifting. So I was like, is that that like a species in this world? It's just a shapeshifter? I don't know. I had questions about that guy. I like him. Yeah, I liked him too. I thought their um the little glossary at the back would have said what the demon mates yeah. are called, but nope. 
there's a I I highlighted that part. I just I have to go into my vampires had brides, demons had lovers, phantoms had kindred, mm. and Lyke had their mates. Kindred. Even the ghoul never left the troop that had first infected it. Yes, there you go. Uh, Valkyrie, Valkyrie formed no such bonds. They drew strength from their covens, but were completely independent when they went away from it. So how does that work when we know that? some of the Valkyries get fucked. Is that not going to be a mate match? Um. Well, their other half mates with them, but they, I think, fall in love with their mate. Vampires are more or less evil creatures in this series, besides, like, the few that get books. But we like the evil Don't worry. <laughs> Lothair, his book is, like... I feel like I'm hyping it up too much. So, no. Let's just say Lothair's book happens, and he's a vampire, and who is his mate? We don't know. I mean, I know, but you don't know. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay. Wait. This is another thing I needed to say about the audiobook, because they talk about the cousin. What's his name? Owen? Bowen. Bowen. <laughs> Owen. <laughs> they mention at the end, the very, very end, how Bowen is apparently this like rootless man because he lost his mate blah 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 like he was very cold and stuff and i was like this is another issue with audiobooks because how he's portrayed by the narrator does no, not sound like it doesn't. that he sounded like a little puppy yeah, very sweet and very, i was like yeah. yeah yeah and i was like okay if i had been reading i probably would have ex- like read his voice in my yeah. head like you know, raspy and, like, cold and, like, yeah. you know, grumpy and stuff. But then because the narrator was, like, not portraying him that way at oh. all, when it was mentioned at the end that he's, like, super rootless and cold, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Bowen? <laughs> I thought he was a sweet guy. Like, so. just, you know? Yeah. A little sad, but... Yeah, I see. I Like, for me, I wasn't... I wasn't listening to the audiobook as I was reading, so... For me, he was that raspy, like, soulless person. But at the same time, it was more, like, blasé character. Like, he would just, like, he's just there to just drink and, like, be drunk and just would have his, like, random one-liners. And, like, but at the end of the day, he will be there for his brother. I mean, like, for his cousin. But, like, mm-hmm. that's how but, I read his character. But when Marge mentions how they per- the actor portrayed him as this kind of, like, sad, yeah. puppy kind of guy... But for uh, Katrin, he portrayed her as this, uh, her like without feeling. So you would think Bowen would be portrayed, but with the audiobook, we don't get that at all. Because he can clearly do it. You're right. Like she sounded really cool. Like she sounded like an assassin. Like I, I didn't doubt that she was the way that she is. But with him, I was like, wait, hold on, Bowen, ruthless killer. What are you talking about? He lost his mate. Yeah. So you would think he would be portrayed just like her you know without feeling and i feel like if i had read the book bowen would have probably been a character like asriel mm. asriel from a court of thorns and roses yes how i imagine asriel like like a little bit more serious sh- not like silent and like yeah serious and like doing his own thing and like living in his own angst and, yeah like, okay <laughs> Uh, that's kind of, I think that's how I would have imagined them. So, God damn it, the audiobook ruined that for me. But I'll, I'm sure his book will be fine. <laughs> his book is so good, guys. I'm telling you, book three. Is it? Because I'm not really. What? You're not interested in them? No, because I feel like, I don't know. They, they kind of already gave his his story. He's sad. And so I'm not really, like, excited. Like, oh, I hope he gets a book. I'm no, just like, eh. They did okay. not. They did not give his story. Okay, yeah. I will say. That it is, it happens to be one of my favorites in the series. And that's telling a lot of things because, you know, I don't like the dead lover trope. Which his mate had died before he even got to touch her. I think that's what had happened. Yeah, that's that's saying a lot for your wife. Yeah. <laughs> for, yeah. For, for your for one of your favorite books to be the one that has the, the dead lover trope. Exactly. Interesting. So I think, I think you should be intrigued by that statement. I mean, I definitely am. I, I didn't like look at the blurbs past book two i didn't i didn't want to spoil it for me oh i'm excited i will say i was actually nervous like how you were nervous about you know guitar and lord death this but one you were way quieter about it than i was are you kidding me i'm there i was like at home i was like 
freaking out. I was like, they have to like this book. If they don't like it, what do I do? Because this series is my life. It's like, it's everything to me. And if you didn't yeah, like... Spoiler alert, we read Katara and Lord Death before this book. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we did. Um, anyways, <laughs> yeah, I was just really nervous because I wanted you to like it enough to continue on, which I think I've succeeded with that. And I don't know, I feel like with the series, because the stories, yeah, they're with the alpha male and like they get mated and all the, all of these things, like they're all, like that's a similar overarching plot point throughout all of these series, all these books, sorry, in the series. Um, they are still different and like you will find one that you like more than what maybe I would like. So I, I like that, you know, you guys are intrigued enough to continue on in the series. I wonder how this series differentiates from other big paranormal series. I haven't read enough of them. Okay. But I wonder how it's different and why this one in particular, I mean, they all, like, all huge, like, we've all heard of the Black Dagger Brotherhood yeah. or um, the Psy Changeling series. Yeah. I'm thinking of those series. Like, how how does this one stand out? Do you know? Well, for me, personally, I read a lot of the Black Dagger Brotherhood series by J.R. Ward. I read a lot of those books. They're different in the sense where, yes, they get mates, but they're just strictly vampires. So we only deal with vampires. And, like, their vampire, I guess, origins are very different than what Cressy Cole writes about in her books about her vampires. And, like, yeah, they're the big overarching conflict of, like, you know, the war between the vampires and their enemies. Um, whereas in this one, their overarching conflict is the, you know, the end of the world that's coming up soon. <laughs> oh, that's the, that's the, the, the series blog? Well, the I mean, the what world? the, is it accession that happens every 500 years? And they have to, like, is it 500 years or 250 years? I don't really remember. Oh, let me uh, get my trusty glossary here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and a time shall pass. This is the accession. And a time shall pass that all immortal beings in the lore, from the strongest Valkyrie, vampire, and Lyca factions, to the phantoms, shifters, fairies, sirens, must fight and destroy each other. Occurs every 500 years, or right now, dot, dot, dot. So, that's like, that's what we're working towards. <laughs> okay, so question. Um, do any of the sirens and fairies get books? Um, Are they mention more in the series since i actually don't know sirens no fair like the fae i think are mentioned because valkyrie are kind of like fae like creatures but they're mm -hmm. also like nymphs and things like that but i don't they don't get books that i can recall although i would want a siren book yeah speaking of which what book would you want to like who what character would you want to see getting a well book? you already know mine i mean i already know he gets one too <laughs> Okay, say someone that like doesn't already have one. Um, I would say I would say Cassandra in the sense where we don't really What? Okay, but listen, <laughs> I'm not for the sense that like I like her character, <laughs> but in the sense where we haven't seen a female like gay. Like how like how different is her mating process than a male like gay? And what does she experience that's that's different than a male like gay? Like I, I kinda wanna see that dynamic, even if it's like she imprints, not imprints, this is not Twilight. She mates with, <laughs> like, another Lyke. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Or if she, like, imprints on someone else and she changes as a person. Like, I'm for it if that okay. happens. When you put it that way. Yeah, then I'm intrigued. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, S? I think just because Seth loves his book, Lothair. No, I'm no, intrigued. I don't want to get your hopes up. <laughs> yeah, I'm intrigued. Um, and then maybe Garrett, the brother. Oh, okay. Does he have a book ready or has it been written? Yeah, it has been written. It's okay. out. For me, I had an idea when I was reading. Okay, and let's I was hear like, it. Like, how is this not a thing? I wish it was. It's not technically a character that I would want to see getting a book, but we all know that Cressy Cole writes historical romance, and we also know that Cressy Cole writes paranormal romance oh. or fantasy romance or whatever. I was like, why is there not a spin-off series 
where it's historical paranormal romance. I don't know if maybe the, the rest of the series explores the past or whatever, but I was like, why is there not a series set in like the 1700s? Oh my gosh, you're so right. And it's paranormal romance, vampires, werewolves, give it to me. I want that historical yeah. smut, paranormal smut, please. Why is this not a thing? Imagine how good that would be. Right? I was like, yeah. why is she not writing a spinoff series like that? She clearly loves those two things. So, like, why not mix them? Yeah. I mean, if if the argument with the accession happens every 500 years, that might not go have... Go no, 500 be- years. Because what happens is... Uh, yeah, it can go back to the, like, you know, 1500s. I would, I would be okay yeah. with that. But it wouldn't be able to happen in the 1700s because that's when, I think, 500 years... You know, that time, that's when all the mating happens, like interspecies, which creates the allies and like, you know, species intermingling causes people to join sides and all that, thi- like all that. So I think that happens every 500 years. I want to go back to that years. time. So let's go to medieval vampire werewolf yes, time. give me medieval. Yeah. I, I'm loving medieval right now. So please give yeah. it to me. Paranormal medieval. Is that a thing? Does that exist out there? I don't think so. I don't think it does, but I think Cressley Cole, Cressley, if you're listening to this, on with it. do it, please. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was my one thing. But if I had to pick a character, hmm, I would say everyone intrigued me besides the Valkyries. And I know that that's not bad, but they were annoying in this book. Yeah, no, they were annoying in this book. Annika was annoying. Yeah, Annika especially. But I mean, I'm hoping that they, I'm, I'm thinking they will get better as the series progresses because I know they get a book and I'll probably like them by that point. But in this one, I was like, oh, just get out of the way. <laughs> but besides that, Bowen seemed interesting. Um, Gareth, uh, not Gareth. No, yes, Gareth. Gareth. And then the Nikolai and Mist and... I don't know. I would say Nikolai and Mist were probably the ones that I was most interested in. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad that they have a book and make the prequel because I'm going to go back and read that. I also remember, like, if I'm really, if it's, like, one of the core characters, I also am excited about Nyx's book. I think her oh, book, Nyx. I don't know if she even gets one. Um, I hope, I think she will. She needs one. I feel like she actually needs as the story progresses, you realize how out of it she actually is. It's just, it's, I don't want to spoil it. But like, yeah, I think she should get a book. And I, I'm excited to see if she does and how it happens. Who would you want to see her with in terms of species? Who I'm thinking about you guys haven't met yet. But what species is he? I don't really remember. But I remember. But I can't, I can't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't spoil it. Would you like to switch places with a character in this book? If so, which character? I just feel like the world is so rich and there's so many different characters that I didn't. I don't know who to choose. So if anything, it would be sp- species, maybe? Oh, yeah. Like, what species would you want to be in that world? Yeah. Let's do that one instead. Okay. We're all like, I don't know. <laughs> I know. I'm like, hmm. I want to be all of them. <laughs> I think I would like to be whichever species... A vampire will choose to, you know, choose me. That made no sense. But I would <laughs> like to be any species that can be a bride of the vampire. So, like, a bride would look at, I mean, not a bride, a vampire would look at me and be like, all right, that's that's my bride. So you want to end up with a vampire? I think so. Doesn't matter this, okay. Ideally, lot there. What about you, us? I think Valkyrie. Val- yeah, Valkyrie. Really? Because of how badass, badass they are and... They love their freedom. and Yeah. Mm. I love that mm. aspect of it. So, yeah, Valkyrie. I feel like real real life me <laughs> would be, would want to be more of a Valkyrie. Like, f- me that loves fiction and lives in fictional books. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think I'd be like you, Seth. I'd want to be the bride of a vampire. <laughs> or maybe the mate of... Mate, like, can I... Can I can I be the bride of a vampire, but also experience once in my life a full moon with a wolf? <laughs> yeah. What in case you're a werewolf that ends up being the bride of a vampire? That way you get to mate also with the vampire as the vampire gets to be. experience the full moon thing? The females? I think so. Has that not happened? No. Yeah, it actually serious? hasn't. What? Yeah, it actually Whereas hasn't. A- 
A female what like gay has not happened before. So wow. there's a chance with Cassandra then. Who knows? Perhaps. Maybe. If she were to get a book. Okay, well then I'm ha- I definitely want her book now because I want to know if the full moon ritual still happens if it's not too, well, clearly it happens if it's not two wolves, but if, if the man is not wolf, if it still happens. Yeah. Because she would still, she would probably still feel the call of the moon. She will, yeah. want to know how a vampire would take care of that. Yeah. Because you can yeah. tell, like, in the series, I'm trying to remember, do vamp, like, sorry, do like a females, they also get mates as well, right? Because I remember her chasing yeah. Lachlan throughout the whole, you know, the book basically in his past what about witches do they get they get books yeah yeah they they get books (laughs) what you're so like not giving anything away (laughs) do you okay do you want me to be like okay this person gets paired with this person this person and this person yeah (laughs) but what in case our listeners don't want to know that yet so we do plan on reading all the books in the series for the podcast, but not, you know. In order. I mean, in order, but, like, not one after the yes, other. Yes, but not. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> words. What are words? I don't know. Okay, fine. I will um, say this one thing. Bowen mm-hmm. gets paired with a witch. Oh, okay. Is there reincarnation in this series? There, are, there is. Remember I told you? There is. Is she the one with the ghost? No. <laughs> Who the, who's the ghost, then? Who gets the ghost? Oh, there's ghosts, too, huh? Okay, book four. <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle this pressure. Who's book four? Who's the ghost? One of the Roth brothers. <laughs> Interesting. So the Roth brothers are like very essential to the series. Yeah, they are. I love them, especially Conrad. Oh my gosh. Is Conrad the ghost? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who the fuck is the ghost? You just gotta just gotta read. Keep reading. I'm telling you, his book also. So okay, so I thought Bowen's book was gonna be my favorite. But then I read book four, and then Conrad's book happened, and I was like, okay, this is number one. And it was my number one for so long until I got to Lothair. So how many brothers are there? There's Conrad, there's Sebastian, and then there's... I think there's four of them. Maybe three. Actually, I don't remember. I think there's three. Maybe four. But yes. Would you... Would you ever, like... Do you think you'd be able to survive in this world, though? No. <laughs> like, if you were as is. Well, if I'm human, then no one cares about me. Right? So, yeah. Like, so they mostly chilling. just kill each other. Well, so, like, if I you're mean, human, you're just living life. Situations yeah. may happen where, oh. you know, someone's mate could be human. In books. True. I'm not saying which book or if it actually happens, but... Okay, but is the question, would you survive if you had mated someone from this world? Like, someone supernatural from this world, would you survive in that world, or would you just survive in that world? Period. I think that's that's a good differentiation. Because if you're just human and you don't even know about the existence of these creatures, which seems to be the case in this book, yeah. then yeah, then you're just living life. That's true. <laughs> this could be a reality right now as we speak. Yeah, exactly. We may all get demon lovers, and let me tell you, in this series, they are pretty amazing. So... I mean, that's right. There's demons too. There's so many species. God damn it. So you're never <laughs> bored. You get a different species. Phantoms, witches. And all of their mating, like, situations are different. Like, how they claim their mate is different. Mating rituals are amongst my, they're probably my favorite thing yeah. in paranormal romance. Seeing how the author is going to do it. And when it falls flat, I'm like, God damn it, this is what I was here for. And it fell flat. Yeah. <laughs> and give me a mating ritual, you know, that's worth it. Do you guys have a favorite quote? Okay. So my favorite quote is, when he watched her sleeping, he often thought, my heart lies vulnerable outside my chest. Oh, yes. That's mine too. That's, that's mine yeah. too. Yeah, that that's was also yeah. mine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, I would say this is not a very quotable book. Mm-mm. 
but that one line when it was when he said that like my heart lies outside my chest it lies yeah. vulnerable outside my chest i was like yeah. oh that's a good line that's yeah. a good line but they're yeah. also um i had another line saved just in case that one was spoken which okay. you know it kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. was <laughs> so it was towards the end of the book and um they're lying in bed after he gives her his blood and she's like you know recuperating um mm-hmm. they talk about how she has access to his memories as she drinks his blood um so he's like, are you jealous, Lass? And then she's like, yes. While you, you've been running around growling mine, I've been silently saying it right back at you. And I was like, mm. aw, oh, yeah. yeah. That, that was cute because, like, you don't realize that, like, while she was yelling and, like, us, like scared, basically, of him, she's been silently saying, yeah, he's mine, too. Yeah. Like, as much as he frustrated her throughout, like, lying and all that, you know. I thought it was cute to know that. Another thing we didn't talk about was, sorry, I'm going back to the discussion of the book, but um, (laughs) when I was really shocked when she, um, oh, how do they call it when they like teleport? Trace. Tracing. Trace. Tracing. When she traced, when she traced back to the, to New Orleans. Yeah. And like, I was like, what are you doing, girl? Where are you going there? Go back to him. Yeah. And then. When turns out, like, she did that because of the sunlight. Like, that's that was cleverly done yeah. because you don't know why she goes there. Yeah. And you think that she goes there because she just wants to go back home. And you think that she's still stuck in that mindset. But then later on, she mentions, like, how she knew it would be midnight. Yeah. So she wouldn't burn alive if she traced there. I was like, that's clever. Yeah. yeah. And, like, no, I have it also saved. And I think it also is pretty telling of her growth as a character. Mm-hmm. Um, because he's like, I wondered... When you'd learn to trace, he, his tone low, he admitted, I thought you'd chosen your aunt over me. And then she replies with, no, I was trying to be smart, cold, and logical. And besides, I've decided no one's going to force me to choose anyone over anyone, including you, Lachlan. Not again. So I felt like that was pretty mm-hmm. telling in like her character growth and how, like, how strong she's become as a woman. And like I just love that she was able to, you know, vocalize her strength all right guys so this is it for this first episode of romance and the monsters hopefully you enjoyed it enough and you'll continue to uh go on this journey with us as we read more books next week we are reading katara and lord death by martin Levitt. um so if you want to join us please do you can find us on twitter at the rtm pod or on instagram at romance and the monsters podcast or you can email us at romance and the monsters podcast at gmail.com you can find me at foes and lovers on both twitter and instagram and you can find me as at but this book on twitter and instagram and you can find me seth on both twitter and instagram at pros with woes and this is it. Thank you for listening to Romance and the Monsters, and we hope we'll see you next week. Bye!